Hello, happy Friday, and welcome to another Freak Machine Friday. Today I want to talk about a class I took while I was studying at Berkeley called Atonal Solfege and how that influenced uh, some of the melodies in Freak Machine. So typically at Berkeley you take four semesters of ear training and then after that you have four semesters of elective ear training which you can choose to take ear training or not and there are a lot of different types of ear training you can take. In the four core semesters the ear training that you do is mostly uh, using solfege which is a it's like do re mi fa sol la ti do it's giving verbal uh, associations to each note of a major scale and then from there you're able to learn to sing between all these notes and hear between all these notes by establishing a muscle memory connection between how it feels to go do re and how it sounds to hear mm mm and so by going do re do re do re you start to feel that interval the distance between do and re in your mouth and in your ears and in your body and gets more ingrained so we'll do things like look at a chart that has a bunch of notes it's it's a melody in in a key and then you're you're you look at it and you sing the melody by identifying what uh, solfege syllable each note is so you could see a melody it's like in the key of C it's like C E B G let's say that would be do me T so and so then you'd be back at do so do to me that's a major third and you learn to identify that do me and then T that's the seventh do re mi fa so la T number seven you get to have a good ear for where all these notes fit in a scale and then you can start changing keys and doing all this stuff with that tool set but after you get that down and like really work really hard on that for four semesters there's a class called atonal solfege that you can take and what you can do what well basically what that is is that's a class for identifying well what do you do when you're trying to hear melodies that don't fit in any key this example from before do mi ti so that that was considering c to be do that was saying well do is C and everything is going to be heard relative to C. We've got C and then we hear the relationship between C and me and C and T and C and so me and do and so do me do C T do so. You see those relationships all have to do with do. But if you're not in any key there is no do. There's no tonal center. And so what we do is we got this book called Modus Novus. Mine has been thoroughly used so you can't really read uh, the cover, but it says Modus Novus. And what this is, is it's a bunch of reading examples that you're supposed to sing that don't fit in any key at all. And as a result, you can't call anything Do, you can't call anything Me. There's no Do to relate to. So you just have to sing the notes as they appear. And each chapter is divided by intervals. So there will be a chapter where everything is minor seconds and perfect fourths. So a minor second is a half step, so like C to C sharp, and perfect fourths like C to F. And so this first line here, it's, I'll, I'll just put it on the screen, it's A, B flat, A flat. And so what you do is you go get your guitar. <laughs> And put the audio thingy over here. Okay. So you play an A. And that's wa wa or ah or na woo. Whatever sound you want to make for it. Meh. And then it says B flat, A flat. Okay, so now you have to say, okay, mm, A, and then B flat is a half step higher than A. A. And so then you have to sing A to B flat, A, B flat, ah. Uh. And then the next note is A flat. You say, okay, well, A flat is a whole step down from B flat. Uh, and then the next exercise would be something like, ah. Uh, and there's no key, there's no tonality to work with. There's no do, there's no re, there's no me. 
So you learn how to sing all these atonal melodies. And there's chapters and chapters of it. So if you ever really want a crazy challenge, get the modest novus and try learning to sing these exercises. It's, it's really hard. Or at least it was really hard for everyone. Well, most people in my class, it was, it was hard for me. Mm. Nah, nah, nah. You know, there's just all kinds of crazy, crazy melodies in here. And so while I was learning this, this class where basically our assignment each week would be to uh, go home and, and learn a whole chapter's worth, which would be like eight or nine melodies, um, and come in and sing them in class. And the test would be to make sh to see if we start and end on the right note. And then you have to nail everything in between in order for that to happen. Um, so while I was taking this class, these melodies were getting stuck in my head. And I started hearing really strange or new sounding melodies for my ear. And so I was writing Freak Machine while I was taking this class. And, uh, and I started hearing melodies like, process of learning to sing atonal exercises, I started hearing these new kind of shapes and ways for melody to appear. So I, I think it's just worth taking some time to learn about sight singing in general. You don't want to start necessarily with atonal sight singing, uh, but learning to sight sing is a great way to get new melodies and a new way of conceiving melodies in your head so that you can hear a melody and identify it and then perform it on whatever instrument much easier. But there's just an example of how uh, some ear training stuff really influenced my writing.